I'm Louis Manra from The Fun Accountant. My mission is to make accounting and administrative tasks easy, quick and precise for purpose-driven entrepreneurs. You might wonder what's on the agenda for today's video. Well, I'm going to attempt to remove all possible burdens when adding a new employee to Sage Business Cloud Payroll, which is in my opinion the premium payroll program in South Africa. Let's kick things off with the employee take on form. This is a form you'll want your employees to complete before they start employment. It helps you gather essential details you'll need, saving you time and hassle later on. A useful tool provided by Sage Business Cloud Payroll. This form streamlines the onboarding process by enabling new employees to input all necessary details themselves, reducing your administrative workload. You can access this form by navigating to Reports at the top of the screen. Then, in the left sidebar, select Employee. And finally, New Employee Form. Click Preview to view the form. As you can see, it's neatly organized with all the fields that your new employee needs to complete and submit. For your convenience, this form can be saved in PDF format. Additionally, I will leave a link in the video description where you can download the form directly from the Fun Accountant's website. Now, I've just logged into the site's Business Cloud Payroll. To quickly add an employee, go to the top navigation menu and click Employee. From the drop-down list, select Add New Employee. Adding a new employee also involves six steps, as indicated on the top title bar. We'll briskly walk through each step, showing you exactly what it entails. The first step is to add the personal details of your employee. Employee code, title, initials, first name, second name, surname, ID number, date of birth. Unfortunately, Sage does not automatically fill in the date of the birth from the ID number, so this must be entered manually. Passport number and passport country. Required if the employee does not have a South African ID number. Indicate whether the employee is an asylum seeker or refugee. Leave these boxes unticked for our example. For demonstration purposes, I'm using fictitious information. Click Next to go to step 2 of completing the employee details, which covers the employee's contact details, starting with the physical or residential address. Use the default from physical address button to autofill the postal address. Work address. Speed up the process by using the company's default address. Home telephone number, if available. Work number must be filled in as SAGE requires it to save the employee. Cell number. Email address where the employee's payslip will be sent. Emergency contact details. Again, I'm using fictitious details for this demo. Click Next to proceed to Step 3. Payment details. The default setting is cash, but let's select net cash for its advantages especially when doing the payroll for a larger organization of faster and easier than manual bank payments 
more secure, reducing the risk of fraud, preventing errors and allows simultaneous payments to all payroll employees. However, a message indicates that Netcash setup is required, which I haven't done and won't cover in this video due to its complexity. Instead, I'll choose to pay the employee via electronic transfer. Filling in fake bank details to demonstrate. Keeping bank details in your payroll system ensures all employee information is conveniently located in one place. Next, the fourth step involves entering this employee's specific employment details. Start date. When did the employee start working? Job title. Department. I'm quickly adding a marketing department. Tax calculation. Taxes will be calculated according to the statutory tables. RP5 certificate start date. This is the same as the employment start date. Employees income tax number. If you or the employee don't have it, it's not a major issue as it can be obtained during the RP5 certificate lodgement phase. SIC code, automatically populated from the company's details. Voluntary over deduction of payers you earn. No additional deductions was requested by this employee. UIF deduction. UIF must be deducted. Therefore, I select not selected for exemptions. The employee must not be excluded from UIF, skills development levy, or the occupational injuries and diseases report. Click next to proceed to the fifth step of the employee setup. We'll briefly explore the employment tax incentive or ETI, which is designed to encourage employers in South Africa to hire young job seekers. The ETI enables qualifying employers to receive a pay as you earn tax refund, reducing the amount of pay as you earn taxes they need to pay. This incentive applies when hiring individuals aged between 18 and 29 who earn less than 6,500 Rand per month. For those of you who are business owners with little to no experience in managing ETI, there is no need to worry. Sage Business Cloud Payroll significantly simplifies this process by following the system's prompts and accurately answering questions in the ETI section, you can efficiently manage this incentive. Sage takes care of all the necessary calculations and eligibility checks, allowing you to benefit from the pay as you earn refund if your employee qualifies. Under the ETI setup, you will find the section for ETI history during the first period of employment. The system provides options to review and select periods during which an employee was previously employed and claimed ETI, either within your company or an associated institution, to prevent prohibited duplicate claims. You are guided by the system in determining if the employee is still eligible for further ETI benefits by tracking and recording employment history across associated institutions. This ensures that the ETI is claimed correctly and that all the regulatory guidelines are followed, helping you comply with the law and avoid penalties. Once you click Next, you'll be taken to the sixth and final step of the employee setup. Here we focus on recording the employee's contractual hours and salary rate. Simply enter the annual salary or any specific rate, and Sage automatically calculates and fills in the remaining rates for you. Upon clicking Finish, the employee details are updated and saved in the system. While there are additional sections to update before we can run a payroll, let's first address potential issues 
with validation errors. We encountered no validation errors in the employee setup we just completed because all the information entered met the predefined criteria or rules. These rules ensure that data is entered correctly, all the required fields are completed and legal requirements are adhered to. Now let me illustrate what happens with validation errors by adding another employee. This time I will intentionally omit certain information. I'm now adding the employee's basic details such as name, surname, ID number and I'm correcting her date of birth to match the ID number. A common validation error that I'm addressing right now. However, I will not be filling in her contact information and for payment details I'll choose electronic transfer but intentionally leave some bank details incomplete. It's important to at least know the date the employee started working and their position. I'm quickly assigning her to the finance department to fit her role. For taxes, I'll use the statutory tables but skip entering the tax number. Next, I'll proceed to the ETI section, skim over it and move on to the hours and rates. Now let's explore how to set up payroll for an hourly paid employee where the pay depends entirely on the number of hours worked. This type of payroll is particularly useful for businesses that employ part-time workers or those who are varying work hours each week and the timekeeping system is in place. Let's continue setting up the hourly paid employee. We left off at the ETI section. I'll scroll down and click the next button to reach the hours and rates section. Here we'll enter the basic salary and to demonstrate you can also add the daily wage rate. And the system will automatically complete the rest of the fields. To switch to hourly payment, simply mark the checkbox labeled Employee must not be paid unless hours or days worked are advised. After clicking finish, the employee is saved and loaded into the payroll system. You will notice an exclamation mark next to the employee's name indicating invalid IRP5 information. The IRP5 validation button will show what is wrong or outstanding with the employee data provided. And there is a long list of information I still need to complete specifically addresses, telephone numbers and bank details. The incomplete fields are also marked with orange font descriptions to guide you on what needs to be completed. Let's jump onto it and quickly complete the outstanding information. I am saving the progress to demonstrate how the system updates and stores the information, even though the validation error remains as expected. Now let's click on the RP validation button at the top of the page to see what's still needed, which in this case is the bank information. This example shows that you can save the information you have at any point. If you need time to gather additional details, you can do so and then return to complete the process where you left off. For me, that means adding the work number and bank details next. I'm choosing not to enter the tax number right now to demonstrate that you can proceed with your payroll setup 
even if you don't have the employee's tax number initially. As you can see, the validation error has now disappeared, indicating that it's not critical for processing to the next step. If you need help obtaining an employee's tax number, check out my video on how to find an employee's tax number using EasyFile on my channel for a detailed guide. As we near the end of this video, I want to remind you about the link in the description to sign up for a 30 day free trial of Sage Business Cloud Payroll. I hope this video has made the employee setup process in Sage Business Cloud Payroll clear and manageable. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to leave a comment below or visit the Fun Accountant website for more resources. Thanks for watching. Until next time. See you soon.